Now coming to the types of malignant hypothermia. Type 1 is classical, fulminant or severe malignant hypothermia. Here there is marked metabolic hyperactivity and muscle breakdown. This is life threatening and active treatment should be immediately administered. Second type is moderate malignant hyperthermia. Here there is futures of metabolic hyperactivity as well as muscle breakdown but the reaction is terminated before it becomes life threatening. Third is mild malignant hyperthermia where you have metabolic signs like acidosis or low ATP but a full picture of malignant hyperthermia has not developed. Coming to other types, sometimes you have only masseter muscle spasm or type 5 it can be associated with rhabdomyolysis. In type 6 this muscle spasm is associated with signs of metabolic disturbances. Type 7 is unexplained perioperative death or cardiac arrest attributed to malignant hyperthermia with adequate and accurate medical record. Other types include say a simple post-operative pyrexia or post-operative rhabdomyolysis. Coming to the normal contraction in skeletal muscle. This is the T-tubule diiridopyridine receptor. This is the rhinodin receptor. Now a current comes, action potential comes. It activates the diiridopyridine receptor which in turn activates the rhinodin receptor channel and this green one are the calcium which comes from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and goes into the cytoplasm and acts on actin and myosin to initiate the contraction. This is the normal contraction. Now what happens in malignant hypothermia? The calcium remains inside the cytoplasm and it does not go back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum and you can see the sustained contraction of the skeletal muscle thereby generating more heat, more ATP and more carbon dioxide. Here you can see the calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum has moved into the cytoplasm and it does not come back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So what happens? There is sustained muscular activity and increased muscle cell metabolism. This causes increase oxygen consumption, excessive carbon dioxide and heat production. Thereby a crisis developed which includes extensive muscle rigidity, rhabdomyolysis, hypercapnia, increased potassium, hypoxemia, hyperthermia and acidosis. At the cellular level, why this happens? There is a mutation in rhinodin R1 gene. This causes alteration in the calcium release channel protein. There is a substitution of cystin for arginine in 615 position. Therefore, this mutated channel opens more easily and also stays open longer time flooding the cytoplasm with lot of calcium. This high calcium stimulates sustained muscular contraction which becomes very rigid and this high calcium also stimulates breakdown of glycogen, causes glycolysis and aerobic metabolism resulting in excessive production of heat. So you have a calcium which is highly available in the cytoplasm, the muscle is undergoing sustained contraction which becomes rigid heat is generated, potassium and myoglobin moves extracellularly and there is glucose metabolism which is happening and ATP, initially it will be high generation of ATP and later ATP is depleted. 